Hey everybody, welcome back to Code Dynamic Websites with PHP. This lecture is called Simple Form Validation and Submission. And in this video, we're going to take the contact form that we just coded in HTML in our previous lecture, and we're going to add some PHP to do some very simple validation to check to see if people filled out the form fields, and most importantly, submit the form so that you can send an email. Pretty cool. Let's jump in. All right, so here is the instructor version of the contact page. So this is the final version. And on the front end, it looks the same. But what matters most is if these form elements work, if it does some basic uh, validation, and if it submits to an email that we specify. So if I just hit send message and don't fill any of these fields out, I should get a really simple error message. There it is, all fields required. Go back and try again. So that's the same as if I fill out a name and a message but no email. I'll get the same validation error message. So it's very simple. It's not the most advanced solution, but it's something that can get you started. There are plenty of PHP plugins that you can use that do a much better job and you can also double up and use some JavaScript or jQuery plugins that will you can use on top of your PHP so you can make it ultra secure. But in this tutorial, we're just gonna do very simple, bare bones validation method. So let's jump into our code editor. Make sure you have the contact.php file open within your student folder. First thing I'm gonna do is just paste a really big comment here in the PHP script, just so you can see uh, what we're gonna be using here. I'll explain in a moment. So in the form in contact.php, so the form that you just built in the last lecture, the name text field has the name attribute of name. If the user submits the form, the post name variable will be automatically created. Remember in our, our last lecture, we briefly learned about the post collection. And that post name variable will contain the text that they typed into the name field. The post email variable will contain whatever they typed in the email field. So as a brief little overview of the PHP that we'll be using in this, follow, this script that we're about to build, we're using pregmatch, which performs a regular expression match. You can learn more about it here. You can always open this up in the instructor folder, look in the contact.php page. I reference all these. Is set determines if a variable is set and not null, meaning empty or nothing is in it. Post is an associative array of variables passed to the current script via the HTTP post method. We just learned about the post collection in our last lecture. Trim. Strips white space or other characters from the beginning and end of a string. So if you typed in a, a, a text field, for example, and you wrote space, like you hit the space bar, wrote your name, so space Brad, and then space, the trim function will strip the white spaces from the beginning and the end. So you have a clean input. Exit. Outputs a message and terminates the current script. Die is the equivalent to exit, just looks more intense. Word wrap, wraps a string to a given number of characters. So for example, in your message field, if you write 140 characters, you can wrap the, the text to have a maximum line width uh, or character width of a certain amount of characters. So if you said word wrap, 50, then that, that 140 character message will have multiple lines of 50 character lines. So whatever that works out to. Mail sends mail. All right, so let's move down here to your contact div. And we're gonna start out and we're gonna, gonna get our hands really dirty. So hang on tight. All right, right under your level one heading. Let's do some stuff. Open up a PHP script. And first thing we're going to do is check to see 
if the contact submit button was pressed. You do that by using if is set. And then we're going to check the post collection to see if contact underscore, underscore submit was pressed. Opening, opening and closing curly braces. So contact submit is this right here, our input button, the name of contact submit. This checks to see if the post collection sent us a variable. Checks to see if the contact submit button was pressed, more or less. All right. So if that is the case, then we can start grabbing the information from our form. So what we're going to do is create some variables. Let's say name. And name will equal post and then name because that is the name attribute of the text field name where you write your name right here. Copy that, paste it below, change some stuff around, email. And we're going to check the post collection for email and store that variable uh, from the post collection in a cleaner looking variable. We're doing this just so that it can look a little cleaner. We can just leave this as is and utilize them a little further down in our script, but this just makes it a little bit easier to read. Less typing too. All right. And last one here, we'll say message or MSG for message. Post message. Okay. So I can leave this as is, but as I mentioned before, we're going to be using the trim function. And I want to use the trim function just to clean our name and email uh, variables up a little bit. So we just wrap the trim function around each of these. There we go. So trim around name and email. We don't need to trim message because, well, it's not as um, strict as your name or your email, specifically email, where it needs to match an exact email. Uh, and then the message, they can essentially type whatever they want. And that's not necessarily true because they could try and uh, use the message field as a way to uh, a attack your website and install malicious code. Some people are very good, but this doesn't really cover the scope of how to deal with that. It's a very easy Google search. So trim up the name and email. So now what we have to do is some very uh, simple, well, we need to check to see if people are trying to hack our contact form by using what's called a header injection. So what is a header injection? Well, it's very similar to a email injection that an attacker will use to send out spam from your mail server using your contact form. So they will hack the name and email fields or whatever fields they can access, specifically name, email, or even the subject fields, to inject PHP code and, and change uh, who the email will be going to. So instead of just the one person you've written in your PHP script, they will try and change that to a whole bunch of people that they've probably found their emails on the internet using email farming, or they just have a list of their own, and then they spam all of those people with whatever it is that they spam those people with. Could be products, services, could be pornography, could be a bunch of crap. And it will look like it's coming from you. And you don't want that. So we're going to do a really simple um, preventative measure for email or header injections. And you can Google how to go even more in depth. The course doesn't really cover a really in-depth solution, but we're going to give you a very simple one, so follow along. So let's check for header injections. Okay. Function. We're going to create a function. Call it has header injection. And a variable will pass in here. We'll just say string. And then we're going to return pregmatch. 
So performs a regular expression match, searches and replaces. And we're going to use a regular expression, forward slash, opening square bracket, backslash, R, backslash, N, closing, square bracket, forward slash. And then after your string there, a comma, and then the variable that you passed in here as an argument. Okay, so then what we can do is below our if statement, sorry, within our if statement, after the variables, check to see if name or email have header injections. So we just do that by going if has header injection and the string will be replaced or the argument will be name or has header injection email. If that is the case, then kill the script or die. So if true, kill the script. There we go. So this is some very basic, um, a very, very, very basic function that will just see if somebody is trying to perform a header injection with your name or email field. Save that. Now, let's um, do some basic validation. Very, very simple. Very simple if statement. And this is all we have to do. So after the uh, header injection if statement, let's add another if statement. This if statement will check to see if the name, email, and message variables are empty. Very simple. If not name, which means if name is false or if it's empty, so if nobody posts anything in the name field, then this will in fact be true, if not name, or if not email, or if not message. We're going to say all of them are required by doing this. So if not name, or if not email, or if not message, meaning if any of these are empty, then this if statement will be true. And if that is the case, then echo some HTML here. We'll say level four heading. And we'll give it the class of error. Notice I used double quotations in here. And therefore, I used single quotations on the outside. All fields required. And then we're going to add an A tag. Okay. The href will be contact.php. The class will be button and block. And the text will be go back and try again. Then we're going to exit that script. All right, I'm going to call this part one of this lecture because we still have quite a bit left to do and I don't want the lecture to get too long in one go. So I'll see you in the next lecture where we will continue from this exact spot. See you there.